Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And today I want to show you how to do an effect. Uh, this is a creature painting that I've been working on uh, for the past uh, week in between other jobs and deadlines and things. But it also made me think about possibly doing another topic. Uh, I also wanted to use the backdrop of this uh, like so uh, to kind of implement our, um, our work process here today. So what I want to show you how to do is some kind of tentacle thing coming out of the uh, the water here. Uh, I'll start fresh because I was just kind of scribbling and, and thinking the idea through. Um, so I actually won't even use this at all. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll go here and I'm just going to show you like one tentacle coming out. The thing I want to focus on, even though this is more of a low light scenario, um, I want to show you like how to do like a dripping wet or wet look uh, to something creepy, crawly, you know, tentacle, whatever. So uh, what I'll do, and I uh, don't mind all my crazy layers here. This is how I work until I, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a bit of a cold here, uh, until I get down to what I'm looking for. So let me add a layer here and let me take, you can do it a couple ways. One way you could just draw a selection if you're good enough with your, your tablet and you can get a clean enough line. You can do something like that. If not, you can just sketch the uh, the line. Uh, one that I like using is the path tool here, pen and path tool. So you just kind of, well here, you know what? Let me do this the right way. Let me tone this layer down. Let me draw a basic sketch first of the idea. I'll just grab the chalk brush. Uh, most of my brushes are available on my DeviantArt, by the way. I've added a couple newbies, uh, so I gotta update that. But for the most part, we'll stay to the basic brushes for this. Uh, click right here, which gives you uh, shape dynamics. I believe if you open this up here and you click this, see how you can interactively see it affect shape dynamics here? So this is just a quick uh, key for that. Use the bracket keys to size your brush way down. And so yeah, so I'm just basically going to sketch kind of a, you know, creepy looking tentacle coming out. Maybe doing a little flip at the end towards camera. I want to show that it's kind of twisting and turning. I'll keep it pretty basic. And then what I usually do towards the water end is I, I fade it off and maybe do a little bit of a reflection in the water. So this won't be too advanced because uh, even things like this can get a little bit time consuming to show a variety of effects. But we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to do one tentacle. Uh, maybe I'll cheat and copy it or something, but we'll just do one tentacle because I'm this is more or less focusing on just the effect. Okay, so there's my basic rough sketch. Now I'll go to the pen and pad tool. Now the beauty of this tool is that you just can click, uh, then click and pull. See how you pull that curve out almost immediately? And I, I try not to do this uh, entirely perfect right off the jump because you can go back and edit these as you're as you're moving. Or, I'm sorry, after you're done, you can go back and edit them. But it's you can get good enough where you can uh, click and pull it right into shapes and not have to go back and edit. I just, uh, I don't know. It's kind of the way I work where I just go back and edit them regardless. I guess because I don't get it exactly where I want it. Uh, and if I'm going to take the time to create a uh, path, I want it to be uh, relatively perfect. But the beauty of pass, uh, I need to do a video just specifically on this as well. Uh, the beauty of pass is that you can save them uh, and edit them. It, it doesn't affect, it, even though I'm clicking around this on the layer that I just uh, drew, it's not on that layer. It's on its own separate uh, path right here. See that? So it's really, it takes a minute to get used to. A lot of people seem to dance around this uh, tool. But it's really important if you want nice crisp lines in certain areas of your work. Uh, and obviously I'm talking so it's looking like it might be taking a little longer. It really doesn't take very long. Hold Command. Click on the point that you want to edit. So just that point. Hold Alt if you want to edit just one of these Beziers by itself. See that? Back to Command to move it. Back to Alt. Hold and edit the Bezier. And then if you don't want to edit just one side of the bezier, just hold command the entire time. And it'll bend like a typical bezier with the uh, teeter-totter effect. I don't know how else to explain it. It's a mini teeter-totter. That's, that's what I see. Okay, so yeah, so move that into place. Hold alt because I want to drag out. See how that wasn't? Oh, let me control Z or command Z. See how there's no beziers there? 
See that? It's just a solid, like, angular point. That's fine. You can convert them back and forth. I can hold all, pull and drag, and now I've got the two handles that I wanted. I can let off, click Alt once. Just set it to one side at a time. So it's really versatile. Command, click here. Oops. And keep in mind, if you click off it, that's what will happen. If you click and drag around just one point, you'll select just that one point. If you click and drag around the entire object, you can move the entire path. Um, all while holding Command or on a PC, it should be Control. And it gets a little tricky to see the line sometimes. I'm pretty sure you can uh, manipulate that even further. Uh, one thing that you can do is just change the color of the, the line work in the background. That's usually what I do. Uh, for this, I'll just kind of fake it. I think I can see it enough to get them into place. See, I can move the handles, and then I can move the, or I can move the point itself, and then I can move the handles. And to move around the work, you just hold space, and you can still move around the work and not affect what you're doing here in any uh, negative capacity. All right, I think we're about there. Let me zoom in over here, check the point. Yeah, this is out of whack here. So go to the pen tool, hold command, click the very edge. Now, like this point, see how I can't get the shape I want there, but if I hold alt, drag it, grab just one of the points, move that into place, grab the other point, move that into place, hold command, move this back, so I can control the uh, curvature here. And what ends up happening too when you get really good at using these, which I'm not yet, but you know, I will one day, I'm a little old man probably. Um, when you get really good at using these, you'll basically be able to do it with a lot less points. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Once you master this tool, you'll need a lot less points. And like anything else, you know, you always start off overdoing the process and the work. And then you, as you get better at it, you realize that, oh, I could have been doing that a lot simpler my entire life. All right, so I think I got that. Let me zoom in a little bit more. It's hard to see, but I believe I did. Ah, the, the point's still a little bit funky. What I want is this point to basically come down and bend back up and inward. So that's the other thing. You want to make sure that you don't forego your uh, your artwork because you, you haven't quite understood how to, to shape these. Now, if you do need an extra control point, it's real simple. You just simply let off everything when you hover over the line, it'll turn into a plus sign. Click it. So that's all I did. Just a left mouse click over the line. If I want to get rid of it, hover it over again. Again, holding nothing. Left mouse click. So it's really simple. Now the only thing it did there, it actually reshaped my my point there. Let's see if I can just command Alt Z back. Yeah, then I don't have to do anything. Um, so yeah, that's how you add a control point. It gives you another little bit level of control. Now, I've got my path here. Now, I think I didn't initially create a path, like right here. So what I do, just to make sure, I'll just drag this over to a uh, new layer, that new layer icon, and see how that turned it to a name, path one? I believe that saves it. It might save it regardless, but I'm just kind of making sure. If I want to make uh, really sure, if that's even proper English, I can just drag over it again, and I got an extra one, whatever. I don't think it's eating up a lot of uh, memory there. So there's that. So hit enter. It kind of sets the path, I believe. It didn't look like it did anything. <laughs> hit enter. There we go. Uh, so, but the path is still there. You don't see it. But if you click on one of these. It should still be there. Yeah, it's there. Okay. So now anywhere on the screen where the, the path is, I can right click, go make selection. It'll say new selection, hit OK, uh, and I can just fill this. Another thing that's even quicker, I guess, right click. Um, oh, is my path not selected again? Right click, fill path. And you can pick the color. You know, I've already got black in there, it doesn't matter. Um, actually, I can go background color here. Hit OK, and I start with that solid green. Uh, now, the only thing I made the mistake of, uh, so I'm glad I did that so I can show you. Since I drew that path over the initial layer, my sketch layer, it drew right over top of that layer. 
Um, now, all I got to do is Command Alt Z back, add a new layer. Again, the layers and the paths are totally separate, so it doesn't affect anything negatively. Go back to the path, select it, right click here, go fill path, background color that's already selected, hit OK. And now, if I go back to my layers, I can get rid of my sketch, and I've got my path just sitting there, or my fill color right there. So, ready to go. So obviously I could have just drew that out. It doesn't have to be perfect like this. If your artwork isn't going to be really close up and high def or whatever, you don't have to take this method. But if there's a certain area of your artwork that you want to be very crisp and clear, this is the way to do it. So again, it would have been a lot faster if I wasn't explaining the process. So there's our tentacle thingamajig. Uh, lock transparency right there. I'll go ahead and grab the... Uh, Chalk brush. I've been painting a lot in hundred open. Uh, excuse me, hundred percent opacity lately. I really like it, and I'll show you why I think it's quicker a lot of times. So I'm going to pick like a little bit darker green for my shadows first. I actually start with a soft round brush just to kind of get some uh, shape in here, and build my light source. Uh, I can probably bump my background layer back up now. Yeah, might as well. Okay, so I've got my edge transparency or my pixel transparency or whatever you call it locked and then I can basically start to just freely get in there and define some uh, some shadows so I want to make this thing look kind of rounded and organic now, I usually paint on both sides of the uh, the shadow at first I'll click off the path. See how I click in this gray layer, you don't see that path line anymore. It just was a tiny bit distracting, so I got rid of that. Okay, so I'm on normal mode. I'm going to go a little bit darker with the shadow color. just want to really round this form out a bit before I start painting in my uh, textures and diff various effects. And don't be afraid to paint back and forth if you're trying to find your shape. You know, don't think that you got to put every stroke in the right place. It, digital painting is very free-flowing where you can easily come back and add something else, take something away. It's uh, oftentimes really great to paint back and forth to find your, your depth. Okay, so now let's take a, a lighter, brighter, maybe a touch more blue in it. And let's just go over here. Again, working 100% opacity and... In normal mode for now okay so there's my basic you know rounded tentacle shape pretty boring at this stage um, there's a couple things I can do here I, I, I like doing a couple different styles one if I'm just wanting to get this done really quickly and I'm not worried about the overall look uh, for instance like this tree branch up here I just painted this all in one shot I didn't add layers and do a whole lot I just painted uh, and it's got that look. It's kind of blocked in and choppy, but I wanted that because I was going to blur it later anyways. So here, say this is an area of focus and I want a little more detail. I can take this tentacle, go select, load selection, um, layer 2 transparency. Yeah, and see how it gives me a nice quick selection. I can use my initial path to do that as well, but I just find it quicker to do this. I can add a new layer. And I can set it to any number of modes. Uh, I can even just leave it on normal for now. So let's try normal. Let's take uh, the chalk brush. I'll probably use the chalk and this, this painting brush here. Um, I'll start with the chalk. Let me add a little bit. I'll select from here to see where I'm at. Let me add a little bit darker green. And let's let's give this some, some uh, texture. Again, I'm working at 100% opacity. But I've got the, let me show you the settings of the brush. Transfer, pen pressure, pen pressure, that's it. Uh, no shape dynamics. And I can just lightly brush in some uh, some texturing. So even though it's at 100% opacity, you know, unless I really bear down like that, um, I can get just some good texture work out of it. And I can just go back and forth. Uh, I constantly size the brush up and down with the bracket keys and just kind of... You know, I'm trying to figure out what kind of uh, feel I want for this this creepy crawly thing or slimy tentacle thingy. 
So at first I just get some some basic texture in there. And I think it helps to work uh, with the large brushes first and then come in and zero in on your detail uh, so you don't spend an absorbent amount of time detailing something that you might just later on blur out or do a wash over or color over. So just kind of you know block in your larger shapes first then come in and detail. That's pretty much how I paint everything at this current juncture in time. And you see I'm pretty much washing out a lot of my initial shape at this stage, but that's okay. It's uh, I'm working in a very non-destructive fashion because I've built another layer over top. So I can really just play around and not, not worry that I'm losing any time, um, you know, by, by painting over something that was initially there. It's not a big deal. Right now I'm just focused on texturing and... Trying to find my uh, my shapes. So you can probably hear on the keyboard there. I just constantly am sizing this brush up and down, just so I don't get too repet. It's already kind of a repetitive thing that I'm doing here, so I want to give it a little bit of randomization by doing that. If that's even a word, I'm not sure. In my world, randomization is a word. Alright, so I think I'm ready to start darkening the color here. And you don't have to be afraid to lower the opacity. I just wanted to show you how I think that blocking in a lot of the initial stuff in full opacity is good. Uh, I'm not going to lower the opacity yet, but it's good for texturing if you drop it to say 50% or whatever. Now, keep in mind too, this is all subjective to whatever your settings are on your, your particular tablet. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq and my tablet settings might be set. I generally set my stuff to uh, hard pressure because I'm kind of heavy handed. Uh, it doesn't mean that your your settings on your tablet would reflect what I'm doing here. So if you don't feel that you're getting the same kind of results no matter how light you press then you might need to get into your settings in your tablet and adjust that and I've got videos on that as well so you can search through my uh, channel there and you'll be able to find uh, videos on pressure sensitivity and things like that or just comment and I'll, I'll see what I can do to help you alright so there's a bit more texture you know, don't be afraid to. You can throw in some stippling and some uh, larger brush shapes to to really make this look a bit more um, organic and, and you know rough or or whatever. Um, okay, so there, that gets us partially the way there. So now I'll take another highlight color. Let me try a little bit more desaturated version of this. Let's go a little bit more into the blue again. So I want this to have the you know bounce light a little bit from the uh, water and stuff like that. And I could do this on another layer as well, but I think the one layer gives me plenty of uh, ability to edit. And I'll show you too what this what this does by applying it to another layer. I can still use my layer modes in conjunction with the uh, base layer. So maybe this looks better with an overlay mode. You know, which I think it gave it a more saturated look. It washed out the uh, blue that I'm adding now. Um, or I could just go to color mode. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> Sorry. And multiply I think will be a lot darker. Yep. Again, it doesn't show the color from normal mode. I'm going to leave it on normal for now. I think overlay wasn't too bad. I do like the fact that it made it look a little bit more rich, but um, it's kind of too saturated in any way, so I'll leave it on normal mode for now. And the things to think about is, okay, like the direction of where I'm going to take this. I want to give it a very wet look, 
so even though I'm painting in what looks like highlights here it's this isn't really this is just a transition uh, tone or color uh, from this one edging but the highlights are going to be very uh, keep in mind when you want something to look really specular that's about the only time you're just going to use straight up white and you're going to do these little um, how can I put it where the white basically just goes right from white to the next corresponding tone there's not a whole lot of transition I guess where if you were to take white and do grab white here and show you what I'm talking about and take a soft brush and do something like this that's you're just showing that this is in a lit room and you wouldn't have it that strong uh, you generally turn it way down you know and there's your light source or whatever you know which isn't even bad I guess I can I can leave a little bit of that in there um, but that's not what you're going to use for specularity. Like, you know, you could start with something like this to show a transition uh, from light to dark. But specular highlights are going to be a lot more solid. So you can bump it all the way up and you can start doing like these really, you know, solid shapes in there. So that's what we're going to do to make this look uh, glossy. I'll go back to what I was doing here, but I just wanted to explain that to you. So you know where we're going with this. But this is just preliminary stuff to get the basic form. And again, just trying to pull from that initial texture that I put down, adding in some uh, little light passing strokes to try to pull some of that shape out of there. You notice how I'm <clears throat> basically taking uh, spacing and leaving some of that dark in there. So then I can come back with the, the darker color, go even darker. And go back into here, show a little bit more separation. And give it a little bit more depth. And that's really all, all, all I do with most of my painting. Not the most advanced painter at this stage, but you know, this is the stuff I do, and I think it comes out pretty nice, and I'm pretty happy with it, so I figured I would share that with you guys. And past this, it's just really doing lots of studies on various objects and how light and color work off the objects. You just can't get enough of that. I mean, just paint everything. Set it in front of your workstation, paint it, study it. And just focus on light and color. Well, and form, obviously. But if you if you focus on just the light and color, I think the form starts to just work from that. But uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting to uh, to look at a variety of things uh, in your studio and do that. You'll learn so much from that process. Now the other thing is where the light uh, transitions from a highlight like this it generally gets a little bit darker right from that transition. So that's a nice way to uh, show a little bit of realism with your lighting. And now I'll just go back and forth. I can hit X, go back and forth from my dark to light, and I can just kind of keep playing with this until I get enough depth and texture into these, uh, I don't know what you want to call these, these the skin texture of this uh, tentacle. Again, sizing the brush up and down and back and forth. And the beauty of painting this way, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't used the smudge brush at all yet. Uh, I don't know that I even will. I might use it a little bit. 
um, something like this, it's not, not a bad idea to use it. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and use it now. But uh, the point is, is that I was able to do a lot without that. And you can, you can paint the entire thing without smudging at all. Uh, I'm still a little bit reliant on the smudge brush because I pretty much came up painting with a lot of smudge brush. Like I would probably use the smudge brush, I don't know, 50% of the time in the painting, if not more. So, but it, it can be time intensive and I think it yields an entirely different look. If you smudge too much, you, uh, you don't leave enough of the texture from your painting. So I'll just lightly blend some of this edge work. And depending on the level of realism I'm going for, I'll just repeat all these steps. And then another thing is to add more color to it because obviously at the color tones it's got, it doesn't look very realistic. The other thing is sampling uh, some of these colors around it. Let's try a soft brush. I can also control the overlay modes here. I could do like, let's try overlay. And it just darkens it. Let's try color. And it's still relatively dark. Actually, I'll darken it first with this. So I'm just trying to show a little bit of the bounce light from the water. And I can sample the existing color there. Paint that back just a little bit. But it's always good to take parts of your painting and grab colors from the background and paint it in there. That's how you kind of blend it all together. Make it, give it a little bit more uh, realism. Now I'll drop the opacity way down so I can softly paint in some of that, uh, that color tone. Just little hints of it. Okay, so now uh, let's Command D, I'll deselect and take a look at that. It's starting to get there. I think it needs a little bit more highlight on the base, the bottom, to separate it. Uh, it looks like it's blending a little bit too much. So let me Command Z. Let's take a little bit lighter tone of the uh, blue here. I'll even uh, drop in one more layer just to give myself another little ability to edit. And I can also use this to round out the form. So I'm trying to do these passing strokes like a like a cylinder shape or a rounded series of shapes. I always think the uh, bounce light also makes objects or things in the painting look a little bit more uh, spooky or eerie so that's that's perfect for this type of rendition also allows me to give it a little bit more depth and separate it from that background yeah that's a little better okay now the other thing that I do is as I get my painting you know elements of it I don't want to get too layer intensive if I like the direction it's going I'll just command E a few times and merge that down to the initial layer that way I can go back to my lock transparency and keep painting or just again add new selection add a layer over top either way uh, something else I like to do when painting stuff like this I don't always do this but it works sometimes really well is you can take the uh, selection tool the lasso tool and just kind of grab some of these shapes here just kind of play around with the idea, just bounce around and try a variety of shapes. I'm grabbing, trying to grab the areas that I picture to be a little bit more into the the higher point of the uh, the round over of this tentacle. So I'm just kind of dancing around there, grabbing a few of these. Something like that. 
uh, add a layer. I'll grab uh, maybe into this highlight color just a little bit. Go back to normal mode. Opacity pretty low, that's fine. And I'll just kind of paint that in just a little bit. See if that adds a little bit more, uh, more depth. And I can click the layer on and off and kind of check the work. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think it needs to be a little bit more uh, impactful. Let me try a little bit of this white, whitish blue in there. The other thing, I always kind of zoom back and take a look at it. Um, but the beauty, the reason why I wanted to show you this, the beauty of doing this effect, I don't know that I like it that much, but it does kind of go towards the specular look that we're heading for. Uh, the beauty of doing this, though, and the way that I showed you, is that now you've got another option. You can go filter, blur, uh, Gaussian blur and you could soften the edges to it. So there's a lot of ways where you can paint in form with just that effect there. So I want to show you that real quick. So if you compare it to what we got here, this is one type of effect that you're getting by brushing in strokes and blending them or whatever. And this is another kind of soft edge effect that you can apply here and there. Uh, so yeah, just want to give you some options as far as your ways to paint. You really have to think of the ways that you can utilize the layers along with all your effects and you can come up with a, just a number of different ways to get to where you're trying to be. Uh, now the other thing that I would do is I can keep repeating that process. Let me add a new layer here. And we try that again but a little bit smaller kind of highlights. See if by building on this process, if I get the specular look that I'm after. And I'll add one more layer, or did I already add the layer? Yep, I did. I'll brighten up this, uh, this tone a bit. Paint that in a little bit stronger. Make sure to paint one edge of it a little bit more solid. I can even brighten it up a tad more and paint one edge just a little bit more bright. Okay, so now it's starting to look a little bit more specular. And again, I can soften the edge because I don't want just a completely hard edge right there. And I'm starting to build the effect of, you know, a specular look. That's one way to do it, and it's a bit slow. Uh, but it, it, it's a more controlled way to kind of add in your highlights. So I'll condense those down and I'll go with the other method where I got this on a solid background layer. Uh, I'll grab the dodge tool here, leave it to highlights, 50% is probably fine and I'll just kind of go through this area right here and see how it's bringing up those highlights kind of naturally with the uh, soft airbrush and then once I get them up to a certain degree where I think there's a good amount of separation from the highs and lows of this uh, this creature, I can then size the brush down and really punch up the highlights in a few spots. Again, trying to be a little bit random about it. And this is really the way that I prefer to do the highlights, but I, again, I just want to show you there's always a couple different ways to do everything in Photoshop. so. It's good to really play around with the ideas. And you can do some pretty nice paint effects with just dodge and burn, especially once you got a good amount of uh, texturing and detail into the work. You can just keep moving back and forth with uh, grabbing the darts, uh, shadows, midtones, highlights, and uh, painting things forward and back. And I can also grab my smudge brush here, soften some of this and move the uh, highlight around so it doesn't look so, I don't know, so pinpoint, I guess. This is something about it's not looking really the way that I want, so I can move that highlight effect around. A 
like so. Now keep in mind too, I've got this uh, more of a soft brush, so as it's as it's smudging, it's kind of blurring. Uh, if you just want to pull around your tones a bit more and keep a more solid edging look, just grab a hard round, and as you pull it, it'll pull the whole color into an area. So this can be useful for not uh, not blending so much. You can still blend with it, but moving solid color back and forth and getting shapes of color defined. I use this a lot for like hair effects and uh, grass. I think I did some of this over here with that same effect where I just pull it in a, a direction and shape the you can shape the shadows, shape the colors, all that really well with this effect. So I kind of do a, a mix. So one thing I do like about using this effect is all the colors stay re real vibrant and where they're at. You get in the habit of blending too much with the uh, the softer effect or the scattering on, I should say. It basically will uh, give you a smudged uh, painting at the end. And it takes away some of the, I guess, the vibrancy or viscosity or something. Not really sure what the proper terminology there is. Okay, so there's there's a little bit more of our highlight. You know, I've got to do some more up here, obviously. So I'll go back to the dodge tool. Grab a little bit more of the highlights here on the very edge. Can even hit just the bounce light just a little bit in a spot or two. It's probably gonna be a touch lighter at the base because the water is gonna reflect light. Okay, so there's our initial tentacle, and I, you know I can just keep going. Obviously, this is already getting a little bit time consuming but it really just depends on how much overall detail you want into this. Uh, so that's our base lighting scenario and highlights. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you is how to add uh, a water effect to our kind of glistening tentacle here, a shiny tentacle. So to do that, uh, the way that I do it anyways, I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way or whatever, uh, I'll just basically take, actually this tone's probably perfect, it's not quite white but close. And I'll take a uh, more of a solid brush. I'll use the chalk brush here at 100% opacity to start. And I'll just kind of sketch in where I think I see, you know, the shape of or the shape or the uh, effect of water. So I'll do like say these rounded half moon shapes here and there. I'll do like these pools of water where they seem to be weighing down onto the uh, the existing shape, and then. Also keeping in mind that they would round around the form. And then at some point drip down like this. So I'll just basically draw this in real quick. So again, I think it would pull up in certain areas. And this is just my depiction of what I think water would look like. So obviously, look at reference. Um, that's something else I wanted to touch on. Obviously, you've seen I didn't pull any, any reference here. Um, I should. It's always great to pull reference. Um, you should always study uh, any of this stuff in real life, and it's not a bad thing. So I probably should have had some reference to the side for the uh, the tentacle. Uh, obviously, great reference would have been uh, aquatic life, squids, octopus. Um, for the skin texture, maybe reptilian. Uh, you know, frogs, just, you know, whatever, you know, just look at nature pictures and you'll get plenty of ideas. Um, so yeah, so, so I think it could have been a lot better by pulling reference. And then as far as texturing, I like to paint in textures as much as I can because it gives me a better understanding so I can paint my own stuff, but it's really quick to just grab some textures and you can throw them in with like multiply overlay modes uh, screen sometimes for for lightning effects so you, you know you can do that as well and generally you will get a better 
uh, rendition from that but I just wanted to show you how you can do it without you know that reference as well so I picture the areas where the water comes together it would pull up and then drip again you know you want lots of uh, highs and lows generally for the eraser I'll pick a solid eraser right now I'm basically just trying to get the shape or shapes down uh, for the way that I see the liquid. I am also keeping in mind that I'm going to shade uh, some of this as well. So even though the shapes look a little bit bulky in some areas, that's because I'm actually picturing uh, adding the shading in there as well. I'll show you that here in a minute. Probably should have time lapsed this, but I don't know. I never know because some people comment and they say, man, you know, thanks so much. I love watching that stuff in real time. And then other people say, or I guess they don't say as much, but I watch the uh, <laughs> the retention scores on the video, and I'm like, oh, man, most of the people dropped off in the first 10 minutes. That's not good. So I guess it's just like, you know, that old adage, you can please 90% 90% 90 of the people 10% of the time and 10% of the people 90% of the time, but you're never going to please 100% of the people a hundred percent of the time right something like that anyways I do my best that's all I can do and hopefully some people learn some stuff so again just trying to get some of the shape in there I guess even at some parts it would look cool to have it Pull at the bottom just a little bit. Water's kind of funky like that. It just kind of can collect and then gravity will pull it away from the object it's collecting on. Yeah, and water's tricky. I've learned that from uh, I had a leak at the old house and the leaks cannot always be exactly where you see the uh, damage, just so you know. Because water can travel and then come off a different area so that was fun I'm sitting there fixing something and <laughs> realizing oh man it's not I'm fixing the wrong spot that was that was pretty uh that was an eye-opening experience all right sorry this is just uh I want to give enough of it where it's it looks relatively realistic because if I just do it all in one area obviously that's not gonna sell the effect it also does this effect where it kind of dissipates off like that's what this is where it comes down it rounds down like it's heavier down here and it's already kind of washed away right there so maybe I can do a little bit of that with the soft brushed effect <clears throat> And forgive my voice if it sounds a little bit bad. I've uh, just gotten over a pretty horrendous cold. Alright, so let's try something like that. Let's see if we can just do one, one little drip. A couple little drips. All right, and I guess it would be, I just want to keep adding more. I just feel like this, uh, to really sell the effect, it should be all over the place. <clears throat> and the other thing I want to mention too is whenever you do get effects like this, uh, the way that you want them, do the, uh, the smart thing and save them. You know, or at least make sure that you are good at remembering what you did on what painting and save out your layers. But I go a step further and I've got a folder I call like Rob's Clip Art. And I just save all my various elements of different things that I think I kind of hit the nail on the head. And then I can always go back to that. Like right here, this part doesn't look right. It looks like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like water. I don't know what I'm doing right there, but I sometimes I have to work through it. To find the uh, the shapes that look good and sometimes I just have to delete it and start over but 
um, when I do get something just right, I, you know, I'll save that element and it definitely helps. If nothing else, it helps as a reference point when I'm painting it again. But it's my artwork, so if I can reuse it, um, definitely not going to feel bad about that, you know. So just keep that in mind that saving some of this stuff can really speed you up on the next one. Yeah, that looks weird. I don't even know what I did there. Let's try getting rid of this middle part. Oh. And I think it is because I'm painting too much of it in this kind of stringy fashion. Because I'm, I'm thinking about the, you know, kind of wet look that I'm going for and the slimy kind of drippy thing. But uh, a lot of times water will also look like a larger shape. So let me try that real fast. So let's picture that the water is pulling down this way. And kind of drips down like this. Hold Alt. I always leave mine to add to selection, and then I just hold Alt to subtract from the selection, just so you know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to kind of find this shape that I'm looking for. Keeping in mind too that this is a separate layer again so I can play around with something like this and come back and erase. Smooth out some of these lines, see if I can make this work. And I think this is where using more reference helps you. Uh, areas where you kind of tend to struggle or, you know, you can't see the shape that you're looking for as well. Uh, the reference will def definitely help in those scenarios or this type of scenario. But I do like to struggle through my work every now and then and just kind of find my way. I think it... Uh, Built character or something. All right, well, let's just try this for now. It gives us enough uh, shapes to play with, anyways, to go to the next stage. Okay, so there's our, our wet kind of look on its separate layer. Now the reason why I like to do it like this, again I can lock transparency and I can start painting in the shadow. Uh, for the shadow I'll probably use a soft brush and just zoom in a bit. And we don't have to do a whole lot of blending. I'll add, uh, it can be dark, probably just black and white at this stage. Or that's not really quite white but, you know, a dark and a light basically. And if you want to smudge and blend some of this you have to take off the uh, lock transparency. Like that. I can blend out some of those little funky shapes that I got in there from painting. And then lock transparency again to paint. And I'll turn the opacity down. Let's try 40. And all I want to do is give, give it a little bit of a depth look. We're actually going to drop the opacity when I apply the effect. But water does have a little bit of a, a depth and a refraction to it. So we want to show a little bit of the uh, edging shadows. Kind of does it all around. And then it even does a little bit on the insides. So I'm just going around the edges and trying to Show a little bit more depth with the water shape. Not too much because you don't want it to look like it's a uh, you know, real thick material, I guess. But it's got a little bit of that to it. So 
skin it does it on the inside a little bit as well and it's gonna look I'm going a touch more solid because I know I'm gonna drop the opacity here which really gives it more of the effect again I'll take the uh, lock transparency off I'll blend some of the uh, edges because I want it to look pretty smooth or not the edges but that texturing that I got on the inside from the paint the shoddy paint work I did alright so and before I get too far into it I'll check the work real quick but I think it's heading in the right direction okay so now I've got a little bit of my depth kind of painted in there I can drop the opacity I want enough of the uh, the underlying color to show through for it to look more like water and obviously it you know it looks too soft or you know it doesn't look like water once I do that uh, one thing that I might do is is copy it just make sure I got a backup there let's try overlay and bump the opacity back up let's copy that make it a little more solid yeah close I mean it, it almost looks right because of the low light scenario but then it's still not you know entirely selling me or whatever so let me drop the opacity of the one layer over top lower it down like this command E I'm gonna merge those together which really that just takes it back to the initial um let me see if maybe a mix of the opaque layer over top it's almost there but it's a little too soft I think right there is close enough and then I'm gonna add one more layer over top and I'm going to add in one last series of uh, strong highlights and I'll do that with a solid brush I've already got it on another layer and this is just like solid white so let's let's go with white like I said you don't use white uh, very often hardly at all but when you're doing specular stuff, that's when you're going to pull out the, the white. And actually, I want this bumped all the way up. I want nice, vivid, little tiny specular glares to, to bring this out. So you can think about it like at the very highest point of uh, the water, you're going to see it. But I really just kind of bounce around and add it quite frequently to punch up the uh, the effect. Pan back and check the work. Yeah, it's starting to get there. It's looking a little more believable right in this area. See, and that's what I wanted where I get a little bit of the shadows in there, a little bit of the highlights, and it's really just playing with that effect and getting it just right. But that's where the layers can really help you play around with it until you get it. So I recommend just uh, experimenting a lot with that. And I think I would even add a tiny bit more shadow to the... Um, the one side to the right side of all of this and I think it would punch it up just a tiny bit more which would be nice uh, now right now I'm just adding a, on the water to get the uh, water effect where I want it but keep in mind you know you can add a few of these in here and and punch up the uh, specularity of the uh, tentacle as well And I think on the tentacle, though, I would probably do it just a little bit less impactful. I really want the water to be the, the most highlighted part of the piece. There 
You can see how I just bounce around and a little here, a little there. And it's real easy to overdo this stuff too, so you got to be careful of that. I'm definitely guilty of that one. Uh, now I am on top of another layer, so if I do overdo it, I can just blend it into the work. So I can add a little bit more into this uh, tentacle. And if I don't like it, I can just uh, soft blend it in. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Yeah, so I think it's starting to get into that realm of, uh, you know, acceptability. Again, another word if I am not <clears throat> entirely sure if that's accurate, but we'll use it. Okay, so let's say that this is the direction that we want to go with our, our creation here. And the only thing that I see that sticks out like a sore thumb is this uh, this edging to the water. So I'll show you a neat little effect for that as well. And then we'll wrap this up. I'll select all the existing layers that I've got kind of going on here. And again, this is a way to keep uh, moving forward but not uh, limit yourself to not being able to go back. A non-destructive method. Command J copies all of them at once. Command E merges those together. Select and pass down the eyes there, and you've got just that one tentacle now. Uh, I can keep adding uh, color effects, which I would. I'd probably take, uh, I don't know, it, it seems like it needs a little bit more blue or another color, just something. Um, let me try try goldish yellow. I don't know what this will do to it, but it should give it a little bit more area of interest. Uh, let's talk, take a soft brush. Let's set our brush to overlay. Yeah, yeah, I definitely like that. So I'll just take that and tone it way down so I can softly see the effect as I'm painting it in. Yeah, it just gives it a little bit more life. It lo just looks, it looks a little too boring. There's that. I'll probably go with a little bit more of that blue. Uh, another cool effect too is color dodge. That's another way to punch up some highlights and um, give it a bit of a glow as well. And you can usually do that with a, let's say, a darker one. Well, maybe it is a lighter one. Well, it works really good at, at certain areas. I don't, I, maybe I got too much color down, I'm not sure. Um, but that's another fun one to play with. I'll just go back to overlay for what I'm doing here. Overlay basically obviously it does like it says it overlays the color but it also punches it up at the same time so it gives it it brightens it or saturates it as it uh, overlays the color okay and one last effect that I like to do I think with this I would probably do this this is supposed to be a little bit more of a low light scenario uh, which I really got him painted, or the, him, I don't know if it's a him or her. The tentacle here is painted basically kind of a high, higher light scenario, uh, but I wanted to show the detail. Uh, there's two ways you can do it. Command J, Edit, Transform, Distort. This is kind of a fun effect to do a quick uh, reflection. Can I give it a little bit of distortion there? Actually, based on the lighting, it would be more like this, wouldn't it? Drop it behind it and drop the opacity. And again, you could set that to something else on uh, that color. Maybe overlay. And then lower opacity. You know, so that's one way to do it. Um, you know, for a quick effect, uh, again, a quick reflection effect. Uh, you can also mix and mingle that effect with uh, a little bit more opacity and maybe filter, Gaussian blur, you know, a couple times. Let me try. Yeah, just soften that up. That's one way to do it. I think this is more of a murky water effect, so I would probably go with 
a little bit different effect and I'll show you. I would probably take the initial layer, um, copy it one more time. I'd probably take a soft blending brush, blend the edges. So it looks like it goes into the water more. Especially because I got all this mist and stuff going on. Uh, I'd recommend probably going through and softening up a lot of these edges. Definitely this hard edge that you see on the bottom to give it more of a realistic uh, painterly kind of feel. So just here and there. You can leave some hard edges and then just soften, uh, soften, <laughs> I cannot talk today, soften some of the uh, edge work. And that's just, you know, preference based on your style. Uh, the other thing is copying this part here. Uh, let's do a quick mask. Hit Q. Filter. Blur. Gaussian blur. And soften that edge up really harsh. What it's doing, it's basically giving you a soft edge to your mask. Hit Q again. You don't see it, but it, it did, in fact, keep that. Command C. Command V. And see now what it did. See that edge is nice and soft. So that's a really neat effect for copying your work. Command T will distort this into place. What I'm trying to do is basically make it look like we're going to see part of the creature under the water. Just a little bit. So let's try that. Let's take a... Uh, well, let's put him behind there. And let's take a soft erase. I'll probably drop the opacity a little bit. And let's soft erase that down. I want it to look like it's under the water there. Does that do it? Uh, it's not that believable, is it? What are we missing here? I think it is. I think it's better to erase it kind of up and down and you give it, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't just look like it's smoothly erased at the base like that because you, uh, you wouldn't see it that way. So let's try it one more time. A couple more. Basically adding the opacity back by duplicating the layer and then soft erase more in a, uh, upward motion like this, the smaller brush. Yeah, and you want a little bit more of a hard line there because it's it's where it's meeting the water. So I think that's pretty close right there. So yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Hopefully that's showing you something and giving you an effect or two or three of ways that you could create uh, a slimy tentacle. So if this video has been helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I try to release at least one video a week unless I get sick like I just did. And I think I still got one out a week or maybe two, but it, yeah, just wasn't feeling too good. So um, that is going to happen from time to time. But let me know what you like about the video, what you'd like to see in the future. As always, keep drawing, keep painting, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon.